Hi and welcome back to Route 7 Railway. A slight difference in this video compared to my previous videos where I've been uh, upgrading older locos. On this occasion I'll be upgrading a new one and it's this. It's the Hornby um, Deltic Railroad model that comes pre-fitted with HM7000 Bluetooth sound chip. Now I bought this at Getz. Uh, for a bargain price, a brand new in box, I actually got it for £95. It says on the box, Railroad Plus Enhanced Livery, R30048TXS, BR Class 55, Coco, Ballymoss, number D9018, with sound. Now, Hornby must have uh, fitted the sound chip with, as a way of um, making it more appealing to, to sell. But... One thing it doesn't come with is lights. Okay, so here we are on the bench at Route 7. And so let's have a look at what this job entails. Let's get this out the box. Okay, there's our loco. It's actually quite nice. I like the paintwork. It's um, a Railroad Plus model, so it's not uh, full of extra fine detail, but it's it's a good solid model. <clears throat> so first of all, we'll need to take the body off. And on this, it's just clips. Okay, so as you can see inside, as you can see inside, it's just plain plastic. There's no mouldings for lights. There's no provision for lights there at all. I'm assuming this is the old Lima moulding and Lima tooling. But I'm sure we've done it on the older locos where we've drilled out. So I don't see why we can't do it on this one. We just might be a bit more nervous because it's actually a new model. Let's see how that goes. There's the chip. Just held down with a little bit of tape. And there's the speaker wire. On these it's great just to plug and play them. Now let's put that to one side and keep that safe. I'm just going to put it in there, out the way, keep that safe. Here we go, here's the pins. Now what we'll have to do, is we'll just see which one of these, or which ones of these, is actually the lighting circuit wires. I'll be using number two, which is yellow, and number six, which is white, which will then correspond to the same colour wires on the chip. Also number seven, blue, the common return. And I'm going to solder some wires to that. So that's my job next. I'm not going to show you the soldering because I'll be too nervous, I think, because it's such fine work. I'll try and get that done off camera. Okay. Here's what I've done. I'll zoom in on this for you. There's a white wire. White wire is soldered to number six there and the yellow wire is soldered to number two. And what I've got to do is put the blue wire, a, a pair of blue wires which I've soldered together at one end. I've got to connect a pair of blue wires to number seven. And then those wires, uh, a yellow wire and one of the blues goes to one light. The white wire and the other blue goes to the other light. So that's where I'm at at the moment. The next bit of soldering is soldering this wire on. A bit of a dog's breakfast to do with wiring. It's just completely rough wired to two lights and um, to see if it actually works directionally. So as you can see on the HM7000 I've got the direction of travel one way. So let's hit the light button and that's come on. 
Now, in theory, if I, the other direction, the, unless I've got the, the polarity mixed up with the lamp, that should work the other way. And there we go. Directional white lights. And what I'm going to do with this loco, I'm only going to fit directional white lights because if I'm using this, this is always going to be pulling something. So I won't need red lights. Also, the way it's printed up, it's printed up blank there, but with a head code there. So that's the proof of concept of the actual lights working directionally. And we'll move on to the next bit. Now, just to go back and recap about the, the, the body shell itself. This is old Lima tool in this. And inside there is absolutely no provision for lights. Nothing at all. No, no cab, no nothing. With this particular model, this came with a head codes or head code light sometimes. And as you can see, one end is, is a blank. The other end is got the head code on it but the lights on the on these um the on these particular ones when they did fit a, a main headlight to it it was a centrally mounted main headlight and as i've done on the older locos i've drilled and fitted lights to there so that's what i'm going to do with this i'm going to drill a center spot for at each end for a white light i'm only going to fit the white lights to this because this loco will I'll always be using it pulling uh, wagons so I won't need real red lights um, they would be if you were being fitted in these little tiny uh, mouldings here there's no lenses in this so I'm not going to bother with that it makes it easier for me and I'll still get my directional lights just jumping in here to say that I did decide to fit a set of red lights at the opposite end to the fixed head code and fit a uh, headlight unit. Headlight at the front, when you look at a lot of the pictures, is fitted in a raised, looks like an after, an after build fitment that was attached to the loco and the light was fitted into there. I'll see if I can replicate that. If not, I'll just drill the hole and have the light showing at the front. So we'll see how that goes. So next time you'll see this will be uh, drilled with light stuck in it because I'm using two of these. These are 12 volt, uh, two millimetre LEDs, and this is a diffused one. So it's not gonna show a glaring white light at the front. It's gonna show a slightly softer white light. And it, it actually looks quite good. And this will be getting painted black for light bleed, because as you can see, there's nothing there to stop light bleed coming from this light. So I'll have to paint that, and I'll show you that as well. Okay, I've jumped ahead now and I'll show you what I've done. As you saw earlier, I've connected the relevant wires, the yellow, the white and the, the two blues to the underside of this socket. And th those will tie in with the colours on the pins on the chip. And as you've seen, it, it all worked when it was set up like a dog's breakfast, if you remember. And what we've done here, I've mocked up a light unit on the front and fitted a LED into that. And there you can see, I'll, I'll, hope, I'll zoom into this. So there's the, there's the LED, painted black for the light bleed, as I mentioned earlier. And on the other end, it's a bit more complicated at this end. We've got the single white LED in the middle. Again, done with a little um, mock-up of a, a, a light housing. And also the two red lights. So like I said, yeah, I mentioned that I wasn't going to put red lights in this. But then I changed my mind. So, But I put one set of red lights into this. This is the front with the head code on. So we've got a main feed, the white wire, to the front white light. And I've run another white wire from that feed all the way back as a feed 
for the red lights on here because we want the red lights to come on at the same time as this front light here. And all I've done is use the same return. And I've tidied it all up. I've fitted the wires, used spots of blue tack so I can run the wires. So there we've got the wiring and the soldering done for the lights. What I'll do now is I'll put the chip back in. We know that it works because I did it in as a proof of concept earlier. I'm just going to make sure I put the body on the right way around so that it all works. And then I will show it to you on the track. Do you know what I need? A cup of coffee. Back in a minute. I hope this isn't too loud on the microphone. Right, that's better. I want to fit one of these, a micro switch, so that I can isolate the red lights when this loco is running heavy. I've done it before, so I know what I'm doing. Well, at least I think I do. Right, I'm going to fit it there. One micro switch to be fitted there. What I do to make that switch work is cut the white wire feed to the red lights, uh, solder on extensions to the two halves and connect the ends to the switch. So let's put this back together and get it on the track in the train room and test it. Hi everyone, welcome back. Uh, please excuse the sound if it's poor and I haven't got my radio mic on so I'm just using the sound off the iPhone but we'll get on now we're back up in the train room to give this little uh, beauty a test run with the new lights so I've got a HM7000 set off and um, the loco is linked what I'm going to do is going to set it on automatic as we go set it on automatic function And there you can see the sound's kicked off and the light has come on. Now this is in the direction of the head code um, travel. And there's the red lights to the rear. Now if I just change direction, uh, there we've got a white light, which would be the change of direction. And that's a blank head code. I think that's a blank head code anyway. And the other end, because I didn't fit, I only fit, fitted one set of lights because of the head code direction, there's nothing there. So I can run it heavy in, in the blank direction, if you like. Change direction, light comes on. And there's my reds. So I'll just run it a bit with the reds on. There we go, into the tunnel. This is a DC layout and what I've done, I've just, you know, I've just switched off everything DC. I've just connected a single DCC power supply to the whole layout. And I'm actually getting, this is just for this trial run, and I'm actually getting a reasonable uh, run. There are a few uh, areas where the, the where the connection seems to be playing off. Surprisingly, it's not doing too bad at all. I might act up on those bends because they're tight. Oh, it's not too bad. If I just stop, stop it on here. Let me just bring that back.
So what I'm going to do now, and I'm going to flip the switch that I fitted. So I'll just show you on my knee the flipping of the switch. And there's the switch. So the reds at the back should go off. Let's put this back on. Okay, so white light to the front. Nothing to the rear. So that means it's going to be running heavy. So I'll just put a few wagons on just to show you that. I've got a rake of these cheap Hornby wagons. Uh, they were reviewed on Sam's Trains a, a while ago. They were a little bit lacking in detail, but they were really freewheeling. And I picked a load of them up cheap. So I've got a bit of a rake of them. I'm going to change the couplings at some point in the future to make those uh, a little bit uh, easy to handle and not so obtrusive. So let's uh, let's get this going. Change direction on the old girl. There we go, light coming on. This might struggle with this rake of wagons because it runs on um, traction tyres, which I think I'll replace for um, a better set. Okay, it did uh, jump there a little bit on that uh, set of points. I'll have to work out why that's doing that, but it's much probably because I've only got one feed on for DCC. I'm just really impressed that it's running this well uh, over this whole loop on DCC, just with one connection. So there we go, as it comes past, I'll show you the rear without the lights. There we go, no lights to the rear because I've thrown that switch. I don't know if I stay alive in this because if this was acting up and just on that one or two bits there, a stay alive might sort it. Now I think that's a great little modification for that, that loco and I'm really enjoying the fact that I've got the ability to put some DCC kit on my layout. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.